Buried in old courthouses, abandoned jails, libraries, and archives all across the South are tens of thousands of public documents and letters written by African Americans at the turn of the last century. Mr. President, I have a brother about 14 years old. A man hired him for me and I heard of him no more. He went and sold him to McGree and they has been working him in prison for 12 months. He's done nothing wrong for them to keep him in chains. Written more than 40 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, these letters bear witness to a sinister and little known chapter in American history. Whenever one is in a conversation where someone says, what's wrong with black people? Why can't they get over it? Slavery ended 150 years ago. That's fundamentally false. The reality is that slavery and all of the, the limitations that it imposed on the future and the potential and the progress of African-American families, it didn't end 150 years ago. It continued until World War II, well into the lives of large numbers of African-Americans today. For more than 80 years following the Civil War, hundreds of thousands of African-Americans in the South were pulled back into the shadow of slavery. buying and selling African Americans ended with the 13th Amendment, but that did not translate into actual freedom. One of the fascinating things about the text of that amendment is that it says that slavery is abolished except in the case of a punishment for a crime. With emancipation, the nature of both crime and punishment in the South changed dramatically. In state after state, county after county, Laws were passed to criminalize black life. It was a crime in the South for a farm worker to walk beside a railroad. It was a crime in the South to speak loudly in the company of white women. It was a crime to sell the products of your farm after dark. But the most damaging of all of these laws were the vagrancy statute. In every southern state, you became a criminal if you could not prove at any given moment that you were employed. Once arrested, convicts were leased and forced to labor in coal mines, lumber camps, brick factories, and turpentine farms. They were shackled, imprisoned, and tortured, sometimes to the point of death. The fact that blacks were treated the way they were, like animals. People could be just picked up and put in jail. They could be lost in the system. Nobody knew how to find them. They could be buried in some grave somewhere and families still looking for them. Don't know where they are. I didn't know that the sheriff department could sell slaves to corporations, steel plants, and coal mines. The constant threat of arrest and forced labor, like the threat of lynching, cast a shadow over the South. Slavery had ended, but true freedom had not begun.